we're gonna not laugh. Okay. <clears throat> so we're gonna wait for Facebook to actually gather us an audience. Do you do Facebook okay. Live Never. ever? Never? Oh my God, this is such a great moment. Let's see. So it's five o'clock on a Monday. So this will be, sorry. Um, should come on any moment. Hey, let's tell everyone we're on here live. Hey, Dennis, how are you? Let's let everyone know, know we're on live. We'll wait for Facebook to gather an audience. I am super stoked. Mom, <laughs> do you remember when I bought her thick book in Ohio and you were like, just follow her recipes? Mom, Bonnie, really? I feel like I need to tag my mom in this because when I went vegan, well, let's wait for them to gather. Okay. And, oh, cool. We have 21 people on wow, already. Yeah. So. Hey you guys, Hi, Andrea everyone. Cox here. I am so stoked because Alyssa, <laughs> I can, <laughs> Alyssa Cohen has already been bit by Lewis, and I am a huge fan it's of been Alyssa. A great day, so far. it's been a. <laughs> no, we don't. We are. This is my twin flame, basically. It's my twin flame. So let me introduce you. Those of you who don't know me, I'm Andrea. <laughs> I forgot, just like, it's not about me. <laughs> but I have to introduce myself too. Those of you who are new to Facebook here, I'm Andrea Cox. I am a uh, intuitive healer, a detox specialist by trade. And this is my idol, my soul Aww. sister. I bought her book <laughs> when I was going vegan years and years ago in Ohio. Her book is about this thick. What is your book called? Yes, yeah, Six Pounds, Living on Live Food. Six Pounds. My first book. It's a newborn, basically. Yeah. It was my baby. It was my child that I birthed. It was. Yeah. And she showed up at my house today from Boston, right? Yeah. You're from Boston. Mm -hmm. Her house is killer, just <laughs> FYI. She showed up at my house today with cashews and celery to make her celery soup and interviewed me for her podcast. And I honestly, I feel like I've arrived. I do. <laughs> you guys, this is kind of like meeting, I want to say the president. No. Um, <laughs> that might not go no. over well for no, everyone. <laughs> um, so this is kind of like meeting like Cher, okay? I or like a younger version of Cher. Like this is amazing. I'm so grateful I'm that so you're here. here. Well, it's really funny because you were doing a Facebook Live, I don't know, like six months ago. And you were like, I clicked on it and you were like, oh my God, Alyssa Cohen. I was like, all right, I'm going to come there, you know, soon and we'll do a video. I didn't say it like that. I was like, oh my God, Alyssa, <laughs> Alyssa Cohen's on, Alyssa Cohen's on my Facebook. <laughs> That's what I said because I'm such a huge fan and my mom can give testimony to this. So Alyssa's book is the first book I ever bought when I went vegan years ago in Ohio. And I've got to admit, I made like 10 of your recipes. I was like, this girl is so dialed in. Mm. And she, I mean, I love your recipes. I love your book. I think, don't you have a pizza? I do. Yeah, yeah a really good pizza. Yeah. So I remember that was, I think, my favorite. Yeah. And then you had, is it a tort? Some kind the of? The date nut tort. The date nut tort. Yeah, that is the best recipe and it's the easiest recipe. And that's when I first went raw. I didn't know what I was doing, so I would make salads and smoothies, and I lived on the date night. She court. didn't know what she was doing, but she has a six-pound book well, of recipes. Well, that was after years of, you know, experimenting, and they're super simple and easy. You yeah. have to keep them simple and easy. My second book is from my restaurant, and I love it, but it's a little more complicated, and it's good for, like, holidays or if you're having friends over. But my first book, I wanted people to know how to do this simple and simply and easily and you know, three to five minutes in the kitchen. So let's let's start out about, so you had a restaurant in Boston. Two. Two, yeah. Yeah. two restaurants. Those of you who know how hard it is to open a regular restaurant. Well, I grew up in the restaurant business. So, oh, yeah. I see. Yeah, it's I always see. in my blood. I see, yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. So she opened two <laughs> raw vegan restaurants? Yeah, 100% raw. But they wow. were super upscale. Kind of like pure food and wine. It was that type of thing. Yeah, and, and what did you call them? Regular chef, Grezo. Which is raw and Italian. Oh, wow. Because I opened in the north end of Boston, which is, it's there's like 100 Italian restaurants within uh, one square mile. So it's 
right next to Faneuil Hall. I mean, it's not a real vegan, vegetarian-friendly place. Mm -hmm. So when I opened, people thought I was crazy, but I was making things like gnocchi and... Uh, I'm like, what's every... gnocchi? What's... <laughs> I grew up in Ohio. Gnocchi? You don't know what's... what gnocchi is? I, what is that? They're like normally potato dumplings. They're like potato pasta, and then they have a sauce on them. And anyway. I know what noodles are. Yeah. <laughs> noodles. And chicken and dumplings, because I grew up in Ohio. Um, I know what noodles are. I know what applesauce with red hots are. I know oh, what... Wow. What else did we make? Um... <laughs> My mom made manicotti, so I'm sure you know what yeah, that is. So I made raw manicotti. So it was all oh, like an wow. Italian theme. Yeah. And then I would make cheesecakes. And, and people couldn't wrap their brains around, like the raviolis. People would come in and they would say to me, what's the pasta? And I would say, it's turnips. And they would say, no, no, but what's the actual pasta? And you would say, it's turnips. Right. And what's the, the cheese? The, it's it was cashew. a borzon, yeah, yeah macadamia wow. cashew cheese. So how, okay, so let's go back. So yeah. you grew up in Boston, mm -hmm. right? Well, I grew up in Marblehead, which is a suburb of Boston. Oh, yeah. by the way, you guys, feel free to hit the like button and share this on your page. Sorry, quick plug. And share it in raw food or vegan groups. Dennis, I know you'll do this for me. <laughs> Um, vegans United, etc. So you grew up in Boston, mm -hmm. and you ate a regular... I grew up in a deli, actually. My father had famous delis. Oh, wow. So, yeah, we weren't vegetarian or vegan, That's um, but ever since I was super little, I would get stomach aches when I came home from camp, and I didn't know what it was, and it was from drinking soda, so I stopped drinking that, and then I just kind of, um, I think... I always consciously knew that eating animals wasn't something I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I was always super picky. Like, my family would make chicken for dinner, and I would be picking through the veins. I mean, it always grossed me out. So it was that kind of thing. And when I was 16, I read um, John Robbins' book, Diet for New America. Nice. And I just went 100% overnight. See, I read your book, and that's <laughs> what I read. I actually read your book. I read Natalia Rose's book, mm. and I flew out to meet. I've told this story 100 times. Gil Jacobs, mm. who's my friend on Facebook, by the way, who changed my life in one conversation mm. over the course of an hour colonic. I was like, I'm going home. I'm never cooking my food again. I'm wow. going raw vegan. And I did that overnight. Yeah. And I stayed 100% raw for 10 years. Mm. And now I've been vegan for 18 years. But mm. let me ask you this. So yeah. what made you make the transition? What was like the defining moment that you were like, I'm, I'm not going to eat animals again? And then what, what was the defining moment that you were like, I'm not going to cook my food? Yeah. All right. So this is, so really after I read John Robbins diet for near America, I was already like, I would sit down to eat with my family and I would be like picking apart certain foods. And my mother would be like, go make yourself a peanut butter and banana sandwich. Like, because your lineage is I'm a hundred percent Jewish. Yeah. So yeah. your mom, she would make the regular nice Jewish food and you, yeah. I mean, I had a grandmother who would make all the, you know, like crepola and balances and I grew up in a Jewish deli. No, I know and, what those are, but they're I'm, really good. Yeah. It's hard to get them off. Okay. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I just read his book and I was already like, I didn't like me. It tasted, you know, it didn't taste good to me. So it was a calling. For it was a really. calling. I just yeah. knew I was, you know, I had an occasional hamburger when I was little, but I, I was never, I was always drawn to fruits and vegetables and healthy food. Mm -hmm. So that was easy. I went vegetarian. I started making, I always loved to cook. I grew up in the restaurant, you know, even when I was little in the back of the restaurant making food. So I just started experimenting with vegetarian food and I was making all this really cool. I remember I made, and this nowadays it's like big deal. You can get it anywhere, but 30 something years ago. I mean, thir what was that? 35 years ago. Oh, ago, wow. Oh my gosh. Myself. Yeah. So 35 years ago, I was making vegetarian meatballs and I made them out of TVP, textured vegetable protein. Oh my that? God, that's so bad. Yeah. 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 But you know, there wasn't, I mean, not was, recommended. Yeah. There but, was tofu, but it was, they didn't have all these meat substitutes. So you were, you were a pioneer in the industry. She yeah. was who I actually learned off mm -hmm. of you. Really, Gil Jacobs was huge for me. Reading Natalia Rose's book was huge mm -hmm. for me. But just really the two of you, I remember when I did like rock and raw radio, oh, I was, that was oh like the first. Oh my God, I did that too. Yeah, with Rebel. That, with Rebel. Yeah. How's Rebel? 
I haven't. I mean, I used to live in Laguna Beach. I think she lived near there. Yeah, and that's how I knew her. But yeah, yeah, and so I'm sitting in Ohio, like, wow, wow, I'm, wow this is stepping it up, yeah. you know. <laughs> but if she wouldn't have writ- written her book, I really would have never really kind of caught on to that mm-hmm. lifestyle. Um, it was a guide for me to get creative in the kitchen, and so I used your book. Mm. Um, before I wrote Rollicious Recipes, before I wrote mm. Juicing for Beauty, I used your book as a guide. And I remember oh, my cool. mom, I was telling her before this, I was like, my <laughs> mom was like my hero. I would like take these big salads on Thanksgiving and my mom would be like, Andy's bringing a huge salad. Don't say a word to her. <laughs> like, like I was such, I mean, it was Dayton, Ohio, where yeah. you said raw food and people thought you meant sushi. So yeah, well, I mean, I wasn't in California. I was in Boston. Nobody knew what I was talking about, but I loved that when I first went raw yeah. and I was teaching people how to go raw. I loved that nobody knew and it was exciting and different. I would see people's lives change before my eyes. My goal was to go to a class of hers. It um. was it was between you and reflexology school in <laughs> Irvine. And I chose reflexology school and I never used it. But yeah, I was like, God, I missed the gun on that. But I get to meet you. So... So the defining moment was... So with raw, I actually... So I was vegetarian. I was super into health. I mean, for fun, I would sit and read, like, remember Earl Mendel's Vitamin Bible and... and I do not about, remember that. I mean, I used to read all these, you know, yeah. stuff that a 16 Like the old school, like old Arnold school. Aaron. Right. Yeah. Yeah, all Nucleus that stuff. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. get enough We're having a nerd off. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't get enough of it. I just wanted to know about the human body and how it works and what you feed it, you know, what, what you, how you fuel your body, then what happens. And so, and then when I was like 18, I went to work at a health food store and a woman, I remember she needed a manager and I, she said, do you know anything about supplements? And and I was like, absolutely. And I'm thinking, I don't, not sure what I know. I've been reading and I said, sure. And I started managing the store and she taught me a lot. And she actually, this was the defining moment, she had one of her best friends um, used to use the downstairs for sewing. And she had this little three-year-old girl and they were 100% raw. And at that time, I mean, again, this is 30, wow. this is 30 years ago. It's like, oh, no, wow. 34 years ago. And I was like, she's raw. What is, you know, what's this about? And this kid never had a cold, never had a sniffle, was so super bright and tuned in mm-hmm. and... Um, and it just something like a light bulb went off and I read Ann Wigmore's diet for a new America and that you can't, you can't eat anything cooked ever after Ann Wigmore. Right. (laughs) Thank you guys for telling me where you're tuning in from in the comment section. And if you have any questions for her, post them in the comment section below and thank you for all the hearts. So you ended up seeing this. So the woman the wasn't girl. raw. The, the woman was it was like half raw, but this little girl was a hundred percent raw. And I just started. I read um, Anna Wigmore's book, Diet for New America, and it was like a light bulb. You know, you just know when you're mm-hmm. okay. I was supposed to connect to that, mm-hmm. and a light bulb went off, and I thought, oh man, there's something about this. I mean, live food for live bodies. That yeah. was our motto, right? Yeah. And it's like, but it makes sense. Exactly. And people will say to me to this day, does it really matter? Like, does it really matter what you put inside of your body? Absolutely. It's like, if if it doesn't matter what you put inside of your body, what would? Yeah. Right? And so it just made total sense to me. So let me ask you this because I think it's so cool. She actually brought a deck of tarot cards. She's into (laughs) spirituality too. I want to talk just briefly. I want to talk about the progression and why people... You know, like, I, you know, I started a second YouTube mm. channel, The Detox Intuitive, away from Andrea Cox TV, and it's in spirituality. Mm. And I told you, you know, a lot of people have trouble accepting the shift. They're mm. like, well, why, why is she going this direction? Why? Right. And you really have to prove yourself mm-hmm. in, in that realm, you know? Yeah. And there's a lot of kind of roadblocks put in your way. And I think mm. I told you we're digging the mm-hmm. dirt out and just like, mm-hmm. whatever, let me go my path. Yeah. And it's kind of a natural progression when you've been cleansing and detoxifying the body for so long, mm-hmm. I think, to go in the direction of spirituality. Because number one, the third eye opens when you stop eating pork, mm-hmm. chicken, fish, meat, dairy products. The third eye actually opens. Can you talk a little bit about 
that progression and what you see in your work because yeah. I know you do a lot of spiritual work with people. You got famous in raw food, right? But you actually do. Yeah. So my background is actually in spirituality. So I mean, when I was 18, 19, I went to polarity school and then I became a craniosacral practitioner. And then I was doing, you know, Reiki and a million. I mean, I'm certified. And in she much brought everything. me this <laughs> rose quartz ring that she's going to leave on the table. Go on. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm certified in breath work and everything you can possibly imagine. But so that was my background. That's what I always love to do with people. But really what I like to do with people is wake them up and help them tap into their truth. So in whatever way that happens. So when I started doing the food, I, I don't even really, you know, when you're just in alignment and it just happens naturally, it wasn't like a planned out thing. I just started making food for people. And then I moved to California and I was going to potlucks and meeting people. And I worked, this woman flew me to Palm Springs and she said, oh my God, you've been with me a week. We've pigged out and I lost five pounds. I feel better than I ever have in my life. You need to write a book. So it just happened naturally. Mm -hmm. And I got well known for the raw food, but my background is really in the spiritual stuff. And what I see with people who, um, even with, when they're just, they don't think they're tuned in, they don't think that they're, you know, tapped into that higher, higher spirit or yeah. higher knowledge or whatever you want to call it. What happens with raw food is you're eating food full of light and enzymes and, enzymes. and that activity, your body puts making enzymes in your twenties. So mm -hmm. you're eating all this light and life food and it's, it's raising your vibration. It raises your vibration. And so yeah. what, because I know you eat some cooked food mm -hmm. now, right? I do now. I mean, I didn't for many, many years. I have so. a question about yeah. that for you too that I'm curious about. Because yeah. I know for me, I was 100% raw. Mm -hmm. And then life happened. Mm -hmm. I got in a, a bad, like really short, quick engagement that was an absolute mm -hmm. show. And um, I decided, you know, I fell off the raw wagon, mm -hmm. but never the vegan wagon. Right, I'm always... Yeah. So was it kind of life took turns and, and yeah, I mean, my husband died nine years ago, which is, got a concussion a couple of years ago. Yeah, traumatic. Yeah. It's yeah. like, I wasn't like, Oh my God, I'm eating this cooked vegetable. It's not raw. And, yeah. and I don't think it's about that. It's about what you do most of the time. For me, I feel better when I'm raw. I, you know, I don't know if it's just cause I've done it for a million years and yeah. And I just feel better. It's even I mean, physically, I feel better, but emotionally and mentally, emotionally, it's like it's night and day. Huge, huge, huge. So if I'm eating, if I, you know, if I'm traveling and I feel like I'm eating cooked too much cooked food, I mean, I can have some steamed vegetables. I'm not somebody who is like all raw and then has a cooked dinner. I mean, I am 100% raw at home because I just feel good. Yeah. That's what I like eating, and it's it's what I'm used to. But then if I'm out, I don't stress about it. Cause like we talked about. Oh yeah. Earlier, if you go out to a restaurant, is... it's like, give me an avocado salad and yeah. steamed vegetables. And you just, right. you adapt. You yeah. don't, you don't interrogate the waiter and ask him if it's organic and everything. <laughs> you just, you adapt for that evening and then you move forward right. the next day. And it's not about rigidity. It's about loving your life and having fun. But was there a time that you were really rigid? Oh my God. Oh my God. Super. Like for I, 20 years. For, yeah. I mean, for not 10 like years. Yeah. I wouldn't even time. go anywhere. Like yeah. I was like, I wouldn't I even make carry tea. food with me and stuff. And food, oh, which is fine. I still do. There's a bag packed for tomorrow. <laughs> right. I do. I'm so, going but. on a private plane with a bag packed of food. <laughs> That's rigidity right there. That's well, rigid. <laughs> but you understand. That's why we're friends. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I just, I lost my turn of thought. I forgot what we are talking about. It's not about rigidity, you said. Yeah, it's not about rigidity. I just know how I feel best. But I also want to live my life and have fun and travel. And I want to focus on other things. And it's the spiritual, mental, emotional mm -hmm to me that matters most. Like if you're happy, I feel like you can digest food easily. Oh, much, much easier. Yeah, if you're stressed, stressed out and white knuckling it just because you're not gonna eat a regular cracker as opposed to a raw cracker because there's nothing else to eat, it's that's not gonna create health in your body. It's gonna yeah. create an acidic body because that's what stress does. Yeah, so the first thing I noticed about a lip, oh, hang on, one second. <laughs> ah. Let me just, Say hello to you guys again so you know we're here and this also okay oh God, so the first thing is very bright yeah that's okay 
So the first <laughs> the first thing I noticed about Alyssa when she walked in oh, yeah. is how much we were twins. Yeah. Um, and so the spirituality thing, so you went to polarity school, you said? Yeah, I, t I took polarity for two years when I was like 19. And I, I have no, so I know a lot. No clue on what that oh, polarity. It's just like running, and I'm not energy. embarrassed to say that. Yeah, okay. it's just running energy fields in your body, and it's about the um, chakras. And yeah, it's about aligning chakras, okay. and yeah, okay. like the polarity of um, you know the earth, fire, energy, uh, earth, fire, water, elements, and all yeah. of that. It's like you know energy work, like yeah. Reiki or anything Love it. else. So, so yeah. what I noticed about the the photos of your home is you have a studio of all herbs and at the mm -hmm. an apothecary. Yeah. So yeah. she's an herbalist. Yeah. Um, so you make elixir tonics in the mornings and things like so that. So what happened was a couple of years, about three or four years ago, I decided to open an apothecary because everyone's always coming to me for different, like whether it's essential oils and a mixture for eczema or, you know, a cold remedy with herbs or whatever it is. So I opened this really cool little apothecary and there's like a hundred jars of herbs. Two restaurants in Boston and, you know, a, like a and an herbal, yeah, wow. it's a problem. <laughs> I love it, I love it. She's a Gemini too. And I opened She's an art Gemini. gallery last year to heal wow. myself. Wow, yeah. an art gallery, that's very Gemini of yeah. you. Yeah. Gemini's yeah. love art. Well, the healing, the art, like I feel like heal the concussion, so. Oh, wow, yeah. beautiful. Yeah, but it's all connected, right? It's yeah. like when we feel better from eating good food, when we feel lighter, more connected to spirit or the divine our truth comes out and then yeah. we feel like painting or creating whether it's food or you know you've got me uh, wanting to go 100 percent raw again <laughs> i've been you know it's it's i think i think it's easier to be raw than it is cooked because you don't I have to work too you just carry dates yeah everywhere and, and you can eat i love that i can eat whatever i want whatever yeah I want. whatever and in, i'm not like oh amount. i ate too many dates tonight i ate too many you know I, I shouldn't have this dessert. I mean, it's freeing to me. Yeah. I don't know. And it's it's tastes better. I think so. It tastes I mean, much better. The desserts, there's nothing better than Nothing the better in the soups. And, and if I get the munchies at night, I'll make like the bottom of my date nut tart, which is raisins and walnuts, <clears throat> like a crust. I make a banana ice cream. I put hemp seeds on it and I make blueberry syrup and then a whipped cream macadamia. And cream. what I, I mean, what but, diet can you eat that on? What I notice about um, you is you look exactly like you did when I got your book. Oh, like, no. I want to say like almost like 20 years ago when she walked in, I was like, oh my God, she looks exact. So I just love that you've lived this lifestyle mm -hmm. and you've, you've maintained and maintained. And mm -hmm. so where can they go to get your books, your, mm -hmm. all that stuff? And I know you're constantly developing more and more. She has a yeah. podcast. I was on her podcast earlier. Yeah. She's going to upload that. that. Yeah. It's really good. We yeah. talk about a lot of stuff. Yeah. And your dog is in it the whole and time. And my dog is <laughs> on the <table>. right here <laughs> the entire time. Front view. He's a he, he's an Aquarius or a Leo or something. I don't know. Um, yes. Yeah, so I kind of just revamped. I'm always redoing stuff and and um, yeah. You know, so now you can go to AlyssaCohen.com. It's A L I S S A C O H E N dot com. Uh, you can get the books there. You can go to my Facebook, which is Alyssa Cohen. My Instagram, which is Alyssa Cohen Raw and um, you can find my podcast on iTunes uh, or just go to my site at AlyssaCohen.com and love. you can find everything. Yeah. Alyssa Cohen. Give me a hug. I love this. I was so excited when she was coming over. I literally, I was like, my floors are so dirty. I was on my cell phone sweeping and then I had like a cloth under my other foot. I was trying to clean. It was really funny. I'm so grateful. I feel like I'm meeting like an idol. Yeah, I, I really do. And I'm so glad that you saw the day I, I mentioned you. So yeah, you this is awesome. This is yeah. so cool. I mean, I feel like we have, a, you know, as soon as I walked in, I felt like you're my I was person. like, okay, the beads yeah. on her wrist. Yeah. yeah. We got something in common. Yeah. I love you. Yeah. You're adorable. So go get her book. It's, it's a newborn baby. It's six pounds of raw yeah, vegan channel. recipes. <laughs> it's actually what transitioned me onto mm -hmm. raw. I was so into her book when I went raw mm -hmm. and the best thing and it's it's like a, an encyclopedia yeah, of raw food. It the raw food bible yeah the raw yeah. food bible yeah that's craig summers yeah I, yeah, yeah. 
I am. Um, I interviewed Craig. He's really? one of my first YouTube Florida. videos. So many. Videos yeah, about. it's yeah. so cool that there's this little like there's this group of people. I would say like Steve Adler. Mm -hmm. David Wolf is like he's like the king, mm -hmm. you know, and. I think you're probably the queen. Oh. Um, and then I snuck in there at the tail end of that. I was like, okay, I wrote this book. I'm moving to California. Here I am. So I'm kind of, but yeah, I just love that. There's like a group of like, almost like, I would say like 30 to 50 people that really paved the road mm -hmm. and taught people that, you know, you got to go vegan yeah. and you got to, it's like, I think Arnold Eric was probably yeah. the best. <clears throat> the Mucilus Diet Healing mm -hmm. um, System or something yeah. is probably the best book I ever read. And yeah. Gil turned me on to that. So um, thank mm -hmm. you so much. You're welcome. I'm thank super you. Super appreciative yeah. and stoked. So get her stuff. Listen to me on the podcast. When will the podcast be up? I know you're on vacation, I but. I know. I know. By next. Uh, I'll do it as soon as possible. Yeah. It's a good, <laughs> it's a good one. We Within talk, the week. We sure. talked about a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. I'll be sharing this on Andrea Cox TV. Thank you. Bye-bye, you guys. Bye, everyone. See ya.